Live for the next hour tonight. The case that's fascinated the world, but what really happened to Madeleine McCann? With exclusive access to Scotland Yard's investigation, we can now reveal the most detailed understanding of what took place that night in Portugal. Things that have not been quite as significant or received quite the same degree of attention are now the centre of our focus. The EFITs are clear, and I'd ask the public to look very carefully at them. We'll explain why the images are so critical and debunk the existing theories. We're almost certain now that this sighting is not the abductor. And Madeline's parents tell us how they've coped in the media glare without their beloved daughter. So I kind of knew straight away then that Madeline had been taken. It's not us that's committed this crime. It's the person who's gone into that apartment and taken a little girl away from her family. This is Crime Watch. Hello and welcome to Crime Watch. We're live for the next hour with this month's latest crime news and appeals. We're going to be revealing the latest Madeleine McCann findings in just a moment and following tonight's major reconstruction. I'm going to be speaking live to Madeleine's parents, Jerry and Kate, for their latest reaction to all these new developments. But first, let's have a look at what else we have for you tonight. Detectives from Bedfordshire need your help after... A young accountant was shot in cold blood after his car was crashed into on his way to work. And I've just kind of kneeled to over to kind of rub the bumper and see if there was any damage to it. As I'm getting back up and about to turn around, I heard a loud bang. And Martin has been out with the newly formed National Crime Agency as they tackle the use of false passports by suspected high-level criminals. National Crime Agency, open the door. Everyone needs an identity in today's society, and criminals exploit that. And, of course, Martin also has a fresh batch of wanted faces and CCTV. Yes, they include Martin David Dawson, who viewers identified after we showed this CCTV of him robbing a bank at gunpoint. You told us who he is, now we need you to tell us where he is. Remember, you can press your red button at any time until midnight tonight to have another look at all of these faces. And I've also got some unbelievable CCTV to show you. Who are the two idiots setting this Liverpudlian shopkeeper on fire? There must be very few people who don't know about the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. She was just three years old when she went missing whilst she was on holiday with her family in Portugal. That was way back in May 2007. She, of course, hasn't been seen since. And whoever took her, well, they have yet to be brought to justice. There was widespread criticism of the initial Portuguese investigation and even, at one point, accusations that her own parents were to blame. Well, along with Kate and Jerry McCann in the studio tonight are the Scotland Yard detectives who are leading this new investigation. We've been working closely with them for several months to reconstruct their latest findings, and tonight we can reveal the major revelations that they've uncovered and the true significance of those crucial efits that you may have seen today if you've been watching the news. Now, we ask you to cast your preconceptions aside, to examine this new information, and to do what you can to help find Madeleine McCann. The initial Portuguese police inquiry lasted a year. Private investigators have followed up sightings around the world. And the media storm surrounding the story came up with numerous theories. A friend of Kate and Jerry McCann has spoken publicly for the first time. They released an artist's impression of a man they believe may have abducted their daughter. But what actually happened to Madeleine McCann remains a mystery. In June this year, after reviewing the evidence, officers from the Metropolitan Police began a fresh investigation. 
Now, for the first time, the lead detective is ready to reveal what they have uncovered. I would say it was a, it was a revelation moment. And we speak to Kate and Jerry McCann about how they've coped over the past six years. When it's a special occasion, when you should be your happiest, um, and Madeline's not there, that's when it really hits home. Speculation will be cast aside and new leads revealed as we ask you to help police finally uncover the truth of what happened to Madeleine McCann. Jay, what are your first memories of Madeleine as a baby? Oh, she came out screaming. <laughs> she, yeah. she was a McCann, there's no doubt about that. Uh, she was very loud, but she came out almost perfectly formed. It was really, you know, she was instantly beautiful. Because you had been through IVF to conceive her, that, that it must have had an extra poignancy when she was born. Can you tell me? Very overwhelming, and it's that sort of, that immediate love, mm. really. And she did feel special, I mean, it did feel like after all we've been through, wow. I've looked at photographs of your family around about that time, mm. I think not long after the twins have been born. The thing that constantly strikes me, you have this sort of giant smile in every picture, which is like, here we are. This yeah. is it. This is all that matters. Is that was, how you I felt? Mean, yeah, I mean, it was all I kind of dreamed of, really. And I can remember one morning, uh, my mum and dad were there and we'd all piled into their bedroom and the three kids were climbing on top of me and I just remember my mum saying, look at you, at your three kids, you know, and it was just, it was just great, you know, it's just, it was perfect, you know. The resort of Praia de Luz in Portugal is popular with families from across the UK and the rest of Europe. But six years ago, it became known for a very different reason. It was the place where three-year-old Madeleine McCann was abducted from her apartment. Since then, the mystery of what happened to her has continued to make headlines. But amid the speculation, what are the facts? Kate and Jerry McCann arrived at the Ocean Club complex with a group of friends. They brought their three children two-year-old twins, Sean and Emily, and three-year-old Madeline. What did Madeline make of the swimming pool? Was she right in there? I yeah, she is... was. She was desperate to get was in she? there. Yeah. I mean, we, it was the end of April mm. we went out, and it wasn't that warm, but she was straight in. She said, Mommy, can we go in swimming? And... She loved I mean, swimming. I, I, I really, absolutely yeah. loved it. And so she, she, she really wanted to get in that water. The McCanns got involved with activities provided by the complex. There were kids' clubs for the children. Kate and Jerry signed up for tennis lessons. There was also time for them to be together as a family. And then generally it's probably about 6.30. We'd all go back to our respective apartments and then it'd be sort of bedtime routine, really. In the evenings, the adults would dine in the resort's tapas restaurant which was 50 metres from the McCann's apartment. Five days into the holiday, the group was settled into this routine. I think we all woke up around 7.30 and went through to have breakfast. And it was at that point that Madeline said, where were you when Sean and I cried last night? And it was one of those questions that kind of throws you. We just made a, a mental note of it and we said, you know, actually, we go out tonight, we just need to make sure we're really checking. We, don't want, we wouldn't like to think they might wake up and be crying and looking for us. The time we had by the, the pool and the play area that day was... It was a really fun time that day. It was particularly fun. Oh, the she was sitting in there with a little uh, dress and a hat on and I was paddling my feet. And it was sunny and, and that's where we've got the, um, the photograph. 
the last photograph. We had a, a lesson booked for the two of us, a tennis lesson, and then I stayed on and Kate went for a run. So at five o'clock I went over uh, to meet the kids and Kate came uh, back from her running. Madeline looked really tired. She was really pale and looked quite washed out. We decided to take them straight back to the apartment. And just before six, I then headed off back to play tennis and I left Kate to get them ready. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked towards the floor, but the lions saw him coming and they soon... Again, it was kind of quite a nice memory, really. Um, Madeline was sitting on my knee and Sean and Emily uh, were alongside. Um, we read a story and Madeline asked if she put my engagement ring on, but she did quite a bit, so she had that on. And Yeah, it was just a, a really nice uh, moment, really. And then Jerry got back pretty prompt at seven. They were sitting all on the couch together and they all had their jammies on, ready, had their milk. We sat on Madeline's bed and we had a story. And then Jerry came through and we kind of put the twins into the travel cots that they were sleeping in and, and said goodnight. We were at a ground floor apartment and the window had a shutter on the outside that was right down and uh, the window was closed and we had curtains right across, so it was nice and dark in the room. And then, as always, just closed the door, not right over, but just so it was open a little bit so that the light from the living room would get through. And I have to say, it was quiet within seconds. I think they were all just so tired and fell asleep. The McCanns left their apartment at 8.30, they were joined at the Tapas restaurant by their friends Matt and Rachel Oldfield and Jane Tanner and her partner, Russell O'Brien. I'm going to go and check on my little one. At about nine o'clock, Matt left to make sure his children were all right. Shortly after he'd gone, the remaining three people arrived. A few minutes after nine, I said to Kate, that's half an hour, I'm going to go up. And as I walked in, uh, I noticed that uh, the bedroom door was open slightly wider than I had left it. So I actually went into the room and I stood, I could see the twins clearly in their cot and Madeline was lying there sound asleep. On his way back, Jerry stopped to have a chat with a fellow guest. Very late. Yes, it's going really, really well. At about the same time, Jane Tanner went to check on her children. Her route took her past the McCann's apartment. Oh, Thank you. By the time the starters arrived, everyone appeared settled for dinner. And then at 9.30, which is the time that I thought, right, I need to check, I stood up and at the same time Matt stood up. No, 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 you stay. Matt and Rachel were actually staying in the apartment next to us, 5B. He said, I, I can oh, yeah, pop it. So I said, OK, OK, I'll, I'll go next one. As Matt left the table, Jane's partner Russell also went to check his children. Matt um, went, checked, and when he came back, he said, everything all right? And he said, yeah, it's all quiet. All right. Yeah, is everything OK? Everything's fine, all quiet. Right. Yeah. Russell stayed behind as his daughter had become unwell. Jane went to relieve him once she'd finished her meal. So at 10 o'clock, um, I got up to do the next check. Oh, I'd God. finished eating them, so I headed back to the apartment, the usual route. And I just stopped and listened in the living area for a bit, and it was all quiet. But it just caught my eye that the children's door was quite far open. And at that point, I thought it must have been when Matt checked and he's left it open. And as I was just drawing it over, it, it was like it had been caught by a draft and it just kind of slammed shut. And it was only at that point, really, that I kind of, as I opened it a bit, I, I kind of looked into the room and I was 
I guess I was looking at Madeline's bed and I couldn't, couldn't make her out. And then I realised actually she's not in that bed. And I thought, oh, I wonder if she's woken up, gone through to our bed. She wasn't in our bed. And that was, that was the first time where, I guess, you know, the panic kicked in. And it was literally at that point, the curtains that say that were closed just kind of whoosh. And then I could see that the window had been pushed right over and the shutters were up. So, um... Sorry. So... So I kind of knew straight away then that Madeline had been taken. Within hours of Madeline going missing, the world's media had descended on the resort. Searches of the local area were carried out while reporters camped outside the apartment. A day after she disappeared, Jerry gave a statement to the press. Words cannot describe the anguish and despair that we are feeling. Later, Kate made an emotional speech after visiting the local church. Please continue to pray for Madeline. She's lovely. As the McCanns and their friends tried to piece together that night, Jane Tanner remembered seeing something that was to become the main thread of the investigation. When she'd walked past the McCanns' apartment at about quarter past nine, she had seen a man. He was carrying a child. Her description helped create this artist's impression. Was he the man who took Madeline? A month after her disappearance, the McCanns made an appeal on Crime Watch. For the Crime Watch viewers at home, I think this would be a good time now to review all the information. These are virtually identical to the pajamas that Madeline was wearing when she was taken. By now, Madeline's abduction was a major news story all over the world. But not all the publicity was welcome. The day that you yourselves were named as being suspect, tell me about that day. I think Jerry was scared because he knew that we were in a system that we didn't know and and I think I just lost it actually. I was I was upset but I was angry and I was I just thought, you know, it's just it's just crazy, you know. It's unjust, we're never gonna find Madeline. In July 2008, more than a year after she disappeared, the Portuguese investigation was closed and all suspects, including Kate and Jerry, were formally cleared. The McCanns continued to campaign for police to reopen the case of their missing daughter. Do you always feel conscious that there's, there's a, there's a Madeline-shaped hole there? When it's a special occasion, when you should be your happiest, um, and Madeline's not there, that's when it really hits home. Obviously, Madeline's birthday goes without saying, but it's when you're really getting yeah, your... Yeah, it's when you have the, the big family poignant. occasions, really. But, I mean, that's more... basically, isn't it, a family occasion? Yeah. And you haven't got your complete family. In 2011, the McCanns made a direct appeal to Prime Minister David Cameron for help in the search for Madeline. In an unprecedented move, a team from the Metropolitan Police was given the go-ahead to review the massive evidence that had come from prior deluge. Would the UK's top detectives be able to crack a case that had baffled the world? DCI Andy Redwood is leading the investigation. Primarily what we sought to do from the beginning is try and draw everything back to, to zero, if you like. Try and sort of take everything back to the beginning and then reanalyse and reassess everything, accepting nothing. The work of detectives in re-examining thousands of documents paid off when they were finally given the green light to launch a full-blown inquiry. What follows is the result of this painstaking new investigation by Scotland Yard's elite detectives. 
the truest account yet of what really happened that night. Tell me now about the crime scene itself. Yes, I mean, the family with their three children were in apartment G5A. This was on the edge of a sort of contained area, which was known as the Ocean Club, within which there was a tapas bar and swimming pools and tennis courts. But the actual apartments where they were staying was, was outside that perimeter area, and it was effectively, from front and back, accessible to the public. The front door was accessed via a car park, and then the rear entrance was a side set of steps that led up and into a rear balcony area that went into, into and through patio doors. Madeline and her siblings, Sean and Emily, were staying in the front bedroom which looked out onto the front car park. Um, Madeline was in a bed and the two children were in travel cots um, between, between Madeline's bed and the bed that was nearest to the window. The careful and critical analysis of the timeline has been absolutely key. Primarily, we're focused on the area between 8.30 and 10. We know that at 8.30, that was the time that Mr. and Mrs. McCann went down to the tapas area for their dinner, and we know that at around 10 p.m., that was when Mrs. McCann found that Madeline was missing. One of the most pivotal events on the timeline was Jane Tanner's sighting of a man carrying a child. He was walking in this spot, just metres from where Madeline had been sleeping. This man was widely thought to be Madeline's abductor, but the team was taking nothing for granted. One of the things that we picked up very quickly was the fact that there was a night crash that was operating from the main Ocean Club reception. And eight families had left 11 children in there, and one particular family we spoke to gave us information that was really interesting and exciting. In fact, I would say it was, a, it was a revelation moment when having discussed with them what they were doing on the night, they themselves believed that they could be the Tanner sighting. The British father had collected his two-year-old daughter from the crash. He had been walking near the McCann's apartment. This is the actual photograph taken by Metropolitan Police officers of the man dressed in the kind of clothes he wore on holiday. This image was compared to the artist's impression. It is uncannily similar. And we know the pyjamas that their child was wearing, that it is, again, uncannily striking the similarity. So what you're saying is that the timeline that everyone was working on for years in this case was wrong. We are almost certain now that this sighting is not the abductor. But very importantly, what it says is that from 9.15, we're able to allow the clock to continue to move forward. And in doing so, things that have not been quite as significant or received quite the same degree of attention are now the centre of our focus. This was an enormous discovery for the team an innocent explanation for the suspect who'd been at the centre of the case for six years. Their attention quickly turned to another sighting, which could now be the key to the entire mystery. It was here at 10pm that an Irish family witnessed another man carrying a child. They saw him come down the hill from the direction of the Ocean Club, heading that way towards the beach. Could this have been Madeline and her abductor? He was a white man with brown hair, and the child that he had in his arms was described as being about three to four years of age with blonde hair, possibly wearing pyjamas, a description very close to that of Madeline McCann. Two of the witnesses helped create efits of the man they saw. Today, for the first time, we can reveal the true significance of these images. This could be the man that took Madeline, but very importantly, there could be an innocent explanation. The efits are clear, and I'd ask the public to look very carefully at them. And if they know who this person is, please come forward. As part of their exhaustive investigation, the detectives are particularly interested in a number of blonde-haired men who were seen near the McCann's apartment. Do they hold the answer 
to her disappearance. One witness saw a fair-haired man near the McCann's apartment twice. On the first occasion, she saw him standing on the path that runs behind the block. The second time, near the entrance of the tapas restaurant, looking towards apartment G5A. On the day Madeline disappeared, two men were seen on the balcony of a nearby empty apartment, believed to be 5C, two doors down from the McCann's. A man was also seen in the same area two hours later. At 6 p.m., a man was seen in the stairwell in the McCann's apartment block. And an hour after Madeline was reported missing, two men were seen speaking with raised voices. When they saw the witness, they walked away talking in hushed tones. How important are these sightings, do you think? Madeleine McCann's disappearance does, on one reading of the evidence, have the hallmarks of a pre-planned abduction. That would undoubtedly have involved reconnaissance, and so we're really keen to understand who these people were. They may all be separate. So it's really important this evening to say to the public that if you recognise yourself, then please have the courage to come forward, because it's really important for us to eliminate any sightings that are innocent and nothing to do with Madeline's disappearance. As well as that line of inquiry and the sighting by the Irish family of a man carrying a child, the police are also looking at a third important strand of their investigation. And we have noticed that there was, between January and the time Madeline went missing, a fourfold increase in the number of burglaries that were taking place in the vicinity. In the three weeks prior to her disappearance, two incidents took place in the very block where Madeline slept. In both, windows were used to gain access. Possibly there is a scenario where Madeline could have possibly disturbed somebody trying to commit a burglary. To date, nobody has been caught for these crimes. said in the past that there can be nobody who knows your story who can look back on that night as much as you yourself have looked back on it and said, what could we have done? What should we have done? How do you deal with those feelings now? Maybe I'll say it first because I think I realised really early on that you could go ifs, buts, maybes could just eat away at you and it doesn't change what's happened. Um, it's almost been a mantra for me is to look forward and always look forward at what can still be done. I think it took me longer to get to that point and, you know, I did persecute myself over my decision to eat at the Tapas restaurant for weeks, months, years, I'd say. For years, did you? Yeah, you know, we must, you know why did we think that was OK? You know, obviously, the, with hindsight. But then... As Jerry said, it doesn't help. It doesn't help us. It doesn't help Madeline. And ultimately, it's not us that's committed this crime. It's the person who's gone into that apartment and taken a little girl away from her family. That's what they've done. They've taken a little girl away from her family. Let's speak now live to DCI Andy Redwood, who as you've seen, is leading this big investigation and has taken the time to join us here tonight. In front of you and your team has been a massive task. You genuinely feel that you are making significant advances here, do you? Yes, we do. We are making good progress. There is still much to do. But our revision of the timeline and a re-emphasis on events beyond 9.15 means that we are bringing new information this evening to the public. OK, tell me about that then. Let's focus on 10pm, let's focus on this sighting and you tell me what's important and what people watching need to concentrate on tonight. Well, at 10pm we can see a man walking down towards the sea, a white man in his 30s with brown hair and in his arms is a child, three to four years of age, blonde hair, 
wearing pyjamas, very close description to that of Madeleine McCann. Two efforts that have never been in the public domain of this one individual. Really important for us to understand who he is. Andy, another aspect that seems to me very important are all these different sightings. of. Might be the same fair-haired man, might be a different fair-haired man. Give us a bit more detail on those. Well, there is a number of, of incidents on, either, on both the day that Madeline went missing and in days leading up to her disappearance, where one man or two were seen lurking around the apartments. Now, there may be a completely innocent explanation for that, but we really need the public to help us to identify who these men are. OK, you said to Matthew there was this spike, this fourfold increase in burglaries around about the time that Madeline was taken. And also there was a, a rash of, now we are calling them charity collections, who knows if that's what they were. You think both of these things also might be something that has an important aspect in terms of the investigation? Yes, on the afternoon that Madeline disappeared, at between 3.30 and 5.30, there were four charity collector events where two men went to residential apartments in streets very close to her apartment. And certainly on one of those events at 4pm, there's an e-fit that the public can look at now, a man with black hair, right. um, that we really need to understand more about. and, and, and and identify who this person is. And, and just, it was around about a week before there was another significant, again, let's call it a charity collection sighting. Tell me about this. Yes, and this was actually the week before Madeline disappeared in the apartment where she was staying. A man, and the EFIT is in front of the public now, again with black hair, went up the rear steps and approached a gentleman on the balcony. And again, there are certain elements of both that event and the event on the 4pm on the day with the EFIT we've shown prior to this that have resonance between each other really important for us to identify who these individuals are. That's for sure. Uh, DCI Andy Redwood for now, thanks very much for taking the time for talking to us. Um, so let's then join Madeline's parents. Let's talk to Case and Jerry McCann. You saw there. For us, they were reliving that entire traumatic day and um, nice to see you again and I'm sure it nice. can't have been easy. Uh, Jerry, if I can come to you first. You said the first time that you made a public statement that words cannot describe the anguish and despair that we are feeling. I wonder tonight, having come all the way that you have and having fought as hard as you have for this investigation, hearing the new information, what are you feeling tonight? I think we're feeling hopeful and optimistic. Um, all along we've said that a review needed done and I think the Metropolitan Police have done a great job in piecing things together, bringing all the information and really identifying new pieces of information that really are taking us further forward. Kate, I was entirely conscious as I was speaking to you and, and Jerry when, we were, um, when I was interviewing you that of course I was asking you about the most traumatic and awful day of your life. Of course there is a reason for doing that. People watching tonight might say, well, you know what, Kate, it's six years on. What, what do you think is going to come out of this? You're, you, you're putting yourself through all this heartache. What on earth can happen next? What would you say to them? It doesn't matter how much heartache we put ourselves through so long as, you know, we get the result that we need. You know, as Jerry said, the mess have made huge progress and that's given us great hope that we can find Madeline, that we can find out what's happened and yeah. bring us some answers. As well as all the other cases over the last few years of children who've been found after being taken for a long time, you know, these cases can get solved and I think that's what the public need to think about tonight, the new information and really rack their brains and come forward really. I was very conscious when I spoke to you, actually you said something to me that you didn't say during the interview but you said later on when we were chatting off camera and you said to me Kirsty, you know the younger that a child is mm. abducted the greater chance to st statistically there is that yeah. that child will be found alive. Now obviously you have had to become experts in this but, but I very much got that feeling that for both of you, there is hope there still. I think absolutely. We don't know what's happened to Madeline. Um, we don't know who's taken her. Probably our best chance of finding her is identifying that person. And that's why the fits and sketches and the new information tonight are so important to us, uh, because that's probably the best chance we've got of finding Madeline. Can I just ask you uh, briefly, Kate, for anybody watching tonight who thinks, I know something, I I don't know. I don't know if it's worth phoning in. What would you say to them personally tonight if they're watching? Please, please have the courage and confidence to come forward now and share that information with us. And you could unlock this whole case. So please, I mean, the general public have been fantastic, but please stay with us and come forward. We wish you and we wish the twins all the very best and thank you very much for taking the time yeah. to talk to us this Thank evening. you. Thank you. Right, there you have it. Now it's your turn. If you recognise the man that we've shown you tonight in these e-fits, 
there he is again, or if you have any single scrap of information, it could be about the sightings of the fair-haired men, it could be about burglaries in the area, I would urge you please to do the right thing and call our studio now. You know the number. It's 0500 600 600. You can also call the incident room if you'd prefer. Let me give you the number for that. That's 0800 096 1011. Let's go to Martin.